is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Build. This is a series where we do a sit down with fellow car enthusiasts where we not only talk about the modifications done to the car but also the story behind it. This is my friend David here in his 2006 Deborah X. Very first question here for you. Thanks for inviting me man. Absolutely, absolutely. What initially got you into Subarus? <laughs> it's a well, difficult question. Well, I, I want to say it goes back to like Hot Wheels and playing like Need for Speed as yeah. a kid on the PS2. Yeah. Uh, that's really what got me into cars and like customizing cars. And then throughout high school, everything that we owned, we had to like make unique, which led to like modifying things and making Makes them sense. custom. Yeah. And then when I graduated college, I had like not a whole lot of money, maybe like ten, eleven thousand yeah. dollars And of all the like performance cars of that range, none of them like you can't you can't really get anything for yeah. that price so yeah. my buddy uh who's a year older than me was selling this exact subaru wrx Shut to up. buy a 335 bmw which is another beast of an engine yeah. car n55 and uh i was like two or three thousand dollars short so i had to like sell everything i owned i sold <laughs> sold my bike sold i sold like everything i could find in the garage to try and buy this thing and i bought it for like thirteen thousand dollars back in the day and uh, the primary reason I bought it was because of the, just the sound, the rumble. Yeah. That Subarus have is just so unique. There's no other car on the road that sounds like I feel it. like every Subaru owner, like it, it comes back to that. It's yeah. just like, cause you randomly hear it, you're like, oh, it sounds different. It's different and it's unique. And I think that's why everyone likes it. It's a cool community. Like everybody's just, you know, throwing up the deuces every time you drive by. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as the story behind the car goes, initially, were your plans to make it a track car? Or was it, it was initial show-ish, then it kind of just one thing led to another, and all of a sudden... It was originally fun. built to be like a streetable track car, yeah. 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 I mean, so when I bought it from him, it was modified, and he brought it completely back to stock, and I'm like, I, like, pained me. He's like, oh, I sold my bucket seats, I sold all the suspension, all this stuff. So it was a stock car when I bought it, and then, you know, as I had disposable income, just mod here, mod here. And I was really in like the stance game back yeah. in the day. If you ever followed Stance Nation or Stance yeah. Works, uh, I was all about like just slamming it to the floor, putting that camber in. And then once it looked the part, I felt the need to actually put power in it. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I'm like, yeah. this car looks fast. Now I actually have to put something, you know, <laughs> behind the look. Yeah, I mean, it, even as far as the actual like engine, drivetrain and everything, obviously this was the WRX in the beginning not anymore whatsoever. So tell us the story kind of behind how the STI swap came about, whose car was it in before? It was in some other build, right? Well, so it started that way. Yeah. So you actually, when you and I met, yeah. I think at a car meet, um, you know, that was before my motor build. So yeah. I had the, the looks and the stance and the, the kit and it looked great and yeah. had a minor Instagram following at the time. And uh, then I started, you know, how can I do this budget, but do it well like yeah. i want a car that doesn't have ringland failure yeah, and yeah. I, I want to be able to you know do freeway pulls against people mm -hmm. so uh i met actually a police officer who owned a 05 sti okay. a fully built motor uh it wasn't a closed deck it was a sleeved block and he blew the motor so i actually harvested a lot of parts from his car mm. uh, and he kind of taught me the basics i guess of you know kind of baseline of what you need, what he did wrong, why his engine blew, what he didn't do, what he would have done differently. Um, and from there, like, I thought I could recover that block and it was just too far gone. So then at that point, I'm like, okay, this isn't gonna be a cheap, cheap build. <laughs> that, uh, point, like, that, that, that's when I'm calling up IAG and I'm like, uh, how much is the closed deck block? <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to like use the social media platform. I'm like, can you guys give me any sort of discount? You know, I got, I got some sp sort of sponsorships, you know, for the air suspension and stuff. Yeah. I got, you know, 50% off on, you know, different parts, yeah. but, uh, yeah, no, I didn't get any discounts on, on, <laughs> on motor stuff. Like, so it added up quite a bit. You know, I originally, I think, $15,000 I thought it was going to be and it yeah. ended up, you know, north of 25. <laughs> and that's just, I mean, like that engine drivetrain stuff to get the power. Just engine and drivetrain 25K. Yeah. You know, from the, the, the built short block, closed deck yeah. and then uh, built heads, built tranny. I mean, it adds up quick. Carbon yeah. fiber drive shaft, 
and then you have to upgrade the axles when you put that much horsepower. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. at that point, it's not even about the power, it's about all the supporting mods to, 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 to so like baby break. the power, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, you know, once you start doing stuff, it just does trickle down. It's a snowball down. effect, you know? Yeah, you just have to, um, I, I totally I've been pretty reliable, I think. Hasn't broken yet? Really? No, Nothing's no, crazy? the only issues I've had is like fuel pump stuff. Okay. Because uh, the Walbro 450, when you're doing E85, um, yeah. it pulls so much power. Uh, voltage to, issue. Yeah, voltage okay, issue. So, yeah, so issue. everything is aftermarket, the whole wiring harness, all the way from the alternator mm -hmm. to basically the fuel tank. And then there's no, I guess, OEM or aftermarket fuel sending unit. So there's this little like OEM connector and I fried four or five of them. <laughs> Interesting. So... Yeah, you just gotta, you fix things along the way and that's really yeah. the only issue. So I just wired it directly through, through the pump, drilled yeah. some holes in the tank and make it work. wired it through. And you make it work. Yeah. Um, as far as like kind of specific modifications, if you wanna give people a quick rundown as far as like turbo setup and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So, Subi owners, if you want 600 horsepower, that's what you gotta do. Yeah, that is You smooth. gotta start with a closed deck forged block mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to be a forged block but you have to have forged internals so yeah. forged pistons and rods uh you know don't don't skip on that stuff make sure it's closed deck uh the number one thing that i've learned from people too when you're putting a lot of horsepower is to drill out the head studs and put half inch head studs yeah, instead of quarter inch so that you hold you know the heads on there uh so you're not lifting heads and blowing head gaskets mm -hmm. and whatnot uh, that's probably the number one thing uh, that you should spend money on. Yeah. And then you can sacrifice other places. Uh, I went with the Garrett GT35, which was from uh, the police officer. Uh, and that's a really good turbo. It's, it's kind of old now, the GT35. They have, they've come out with like twin scrolls yeah. and, and different turbos since then. There's probably better options. But uh, the Garrett GT35, man, you, there's like no turbo lag with that thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And from the block, it's like 700 plus horsepower. So to the wheel, like 620 to the wheel with on that. On E85, obviously. Yeah, on yeah. E85. Yeah, on 91, probably around 550. How many five. pounds of boost? 32. Yeah, it's kind of unusable. Like, so like if we're cruising through the hills here and when you, and when you take it out, it out later, I, yeah. I turn it down to like, 28, 26 pounds of boost, and it's maybe at five, 550. I'm at like 19, yeah. or like 20. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And 19 and 20 is, I kind of miss it because it does, like, you can expect it. You know, yeah. when it comes, it's friendly. Yeah. You know, when the, when 32 pounds comes, it's not friendly. It's, like it's coming, angry. Like out of a turn, like, oh, <laughs> shit. Well, so it would be fine if you were rear wheel drive, yeah. but we're all wheel drive. So yeah. when you light up the tires, you light up the rear tires, but you also light up your steering too. You light yeah. up the front tires, you have no steering. That makes sense. Yeah. What is your, so you've had the car for how long? Uh, 2013, so seven years. Oh my God. So over this, this entire time, what are three modifications that have stand out to you that are just your personal favorite, even if it's something small? Personal favorite. It has to be exhaust. Love exhaust. It. You gotta, you gotta okay. go like full cat back or catless. You know, that, that was the first thing I did to the car. That, yeah. Obviously the reason I bought it was the sound. Yeah. Uh, and then the access port, like if just getting into it, just to like pique your interest, yeah. changing the ECU and getting a little bit more boost out of that stock turbo, man, like it wakes the car up. Definitely. You don't, you don't realize how down tuned these cars are from the factory. So I that have to do the stage two yeah. and at minimum, if you're going to buy a super, you got to do stage two. It's almost disrespectful if you don't do stage yeah. two. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't affect reliability really. Yeah. Um, and then number three. What do you think? Oh, three. Uh, I think it'd be something small. Uh, probably something I made. Yeah. This diffuser, man. I put a lot of work into that diffuser. That thing's insane. Yeah, a little much, a little over the top. <laughs> I mean, your car's a little over the top, so it makes sense. It does make sense. Um, so you've had the car for seven years. At any point, were you thinking or just kind of almost wanting to give up on it? You know, like, was there a point where even maybe before, like, you swapped it or something, like, things kept going wrong and you're like, you know what, like, I could sell this, I can get whatever, get an M3 or something like way easier to deal with. You say M3. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so like, I'd say recently, like okay. recently, recently, okay. like start of 2020 yeah. recently. Let's hear it. Um, yeah, so I was just getting tired of dealing with the car in California. Mm -hmm. It just attracts so much attention, mm -hmm. so many cops, all this stuff. Uh, and it's an iconic car and I put a lot into it and made it like my vision. It's exactly how I want it to be. But uh, at the start of 2020, you know, I'm getting older, 29. I yeah. never thought I would like, like luxury yeah. and power. Yeah. And like, this thing's just so raw and visceral. 
it's kind of brutal. I don't take it out as much as I used to. So I was starting to look at like E92 M3s mm -hmm. uh, M, and like F80 M3s yeah. and, and just like something a little bit more luxurious or a Porsche because I have a Cayenne too and like I find myself driving that thing all the time. Like yeah. the sound system in this thing's amazing. It's smooth, it's smooth road trips yeah. and it's fast. It's got like 400 yeah. plus horsepower. Yeah, it's just so, way easier. so I'm like, oh, maybe I should get like a BMW or something. And then like, it was like, something struck me. I, I entered a contest to be on a TV show mm -hmm. with Rob Freddy called yeah. Sorted. And I get a call from Rob Freddy. He's like, you're on a TV show. I'm like, oh, this is God. a sign. This is a sign. Yeah. Like I was thinking about selling the car. This is like, I thought you sold it. I literally, cause I, I mean, we didn't talk for, I don't know, almost like yeah, a couple of years almost. Yeah, well, you know, you're busy forth, building man. your car. Your car's changed quite a bit. It since did. Then. It did. And then, I mean, I'm happy that you kept it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's, it's great. Uh, but yeah, it, like I went dormant for a little bit, you yeah. know, got, not out of the car scene. I still drove it a bunch, but you know. Not so much into social media. Work, posting work all the hard, time. play hard. You got to earn that money. Yeah. No, I feel that. <laughs> if I you're going to own that. a race car, you got to earn that money. <laughs> um, so if you were to sell it, what would you get? If you got to the point where you're just completely over it. Out of it? Like dollar-wise? I mean, no, no I'm, I'm saying, saying, no, what would you get? Oh, what I'd get, car-wise. Car. Yeah, Oh, car. man, Porsche, probably. I'd, I'd get, like, a 911 and turbo it, and then maybe, like, do, like, a slant nose kit, or... I just don't have that kind of money, so maybe E92 M3. Yeah. I like the V8s now. V8 sounds amazing. Uh, I don't know. I honestly... It, it hasn't struck me yet, I don't yeah. think. I think about it all the time, but it changes month to month. Until I stick with the car that I want for maybe more than six months, yeah. then I'll pull the trigger. Yeah. But at this point, you know, I got a new job. I'll probably just get another car. Yeah. <laughs> why yeah, sell it? Like, why would I live with that guilt the rest of my life that I sold it? Especially now that Tanner Faust has driven it and gotten behind it's, the wheel. It's blessed. Yeah, it's, it's been blessed. blessed. It's been yeah. blessed by the legend, the myth, mm -hmm. the stig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Any advice to someone that wants to build a car to this caliber? One little like golden little nougat. Yeah, I'd say do it right the first time. Do it right the there. reason I, I think I've been pretty successful on this build is mm -hmm. because I spent probably six months to a year like researching the parts that I needed. All the time. And uh, I got everything together at once. So like most people get a part, put it on, get a part, put it on. When I did the engine build, I had all the supporting parts already. So when we were tuning it and when we were getting more power out of it, like we had everything that we needed. I mean, obviously things here and there, like we had to change injectors at one point and, uh, you know, maybe some electrical issues here and there. But like I had all the supporting mods that needed to handle the power. I had the transmission that could handle it. Uh, it's just like better to be prepared because mm -hmm. you're going to end up spending more money uh, in the long run if you if you aren't. Yeah. And it's just going to be less time behind the wheel. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. More wheel time. <laughs> Good shit. <laughs> um, is there anything in particular that you regret doing to the car? I do. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I reversed something. So when you like, are thinking all race car and high horsepower, yeah. uh, you drivability sometimes goes out the window mm -hmm. and like street driving and daily driving it. So... It's still like, you gotta know how to drive it if you wanna drive it on the street. But I had a lightweight flywheel okay. and a lightweight flywheel was miserable. Like on any hill and in traffic, you have to get the RPM so high to carry that momentum when it hits the clutch mm -hmm. to get it off the line that like, it was just- it Wasn't even enjoyable. It was not enjoyable. I felt like I was just burning my clutch all the time because it took like 6,000 RPM just to like, <laughs> get it going it's, it's meant to just be dumped and like spool real quick but it's not you know it's not good for the street so i went back to like just a probably an oem flywheel honestly yeah. or just a light not such much a lightweight one yeah it carries the momentum much easier to drive and and that's on like a four puck clutch oh, okay and that clutch has no problem handling the 600 horsepower interesting um i guess to end it out what is over these last seven years your best memory with the car something that stands out did you win something? Was it a track day that was super wow. fun? Or you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I mean, your first track out? day probably like has a soft spot yeah. somewhere here. But uh, seeing Tanner Faust get behind the wheel of my car That's was like, and that was super recent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, just a couple weeks ago, we just yeah. got off the set of Sorted. So 
uh, and then Tanner Faust got behind the wheel, and it was just like a love-hate because not that many people have driven this car, mm -hmm. or I trust them with that much horsepower. Yeah. And uh, seeing him, like, I was like, I can't be a bitch. I got to tell him just to fucking send it. But <laughs> but then I'm like, oh, there's I'd a part so of me scared. where like. And yeah, then I'm like, like it you know what? It makes you nauseous. You're like, oh god, it's gonna explode. Like, yeah, but then you're like, I'm at the peak of like, it doesn't get any better than this. Like, yeah. you're basically like, on the set of a Top Gear. Up, it's yeah, worth it I was like, I don't care. Like, if I break something, parts are replaceable. Like, yeah. the memories that you're gonna get from this are yeah. I like, I like unparamount. Yeah. So I, we just told him to send it, and <laughs> that feeling of just that gut feeling, like something might happen, but then, it, then again, like he's there's no one more qualified than him behind the wheel, and just. <laughs> You know, the episodes that are going to be coming out are insane, like, just getting it completely sideways at, yeah. like, 100 and plus miles per hour. Can you can you tell us his thoughts, or is that set to be yeah, stayed for yeah, sorting? Yeah, yeah, I, I, you, I, yeah. Can, I can, like, not we'll spoil, spoil anything yeah. on the show, but we did really, really well. Like, Sweet. I don't know, we don't know the results yet, and I don't know their reactions to the car, uh, because they, they took them and, and, and filmed, but uh, uh, we, we performed really well, and, and I think Tanner and IAG did a really great job with the build mm -hmm. and equilibrium tuning with the tune because he said this motor and this tune is the power is always where you need it yeah. like anytime I need to you know get out of a sticky situation the throttles and the boost is always there when I need it and he's Sweet. like this thing is tuned to perfection uh, but we need to work on the suspension <laughs> like, yeah. and I'm like oh well it's air suspension <laughs> yeah. he's like yeah the suspension and the tires and they they only gave me 24 hours notice before to, to go on the show so oh I didn't have enough time to buy new tires and as we're driving down on the road trip we're looking at like Subaru dealerships and like looking for pads I like I need new brake pads if yeah. we're gonna take it on the track so if I, I could have been a little bit more prepared but yeah he said the the drivetrain was like spot on uh, but you know, suspension needs some work. Would you? I mean, would you consider changing it out to a set of coilovers or like yeah. air cups or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, the only reason I got the suspension was because I blew out the coilovers. Oh, they okay. were like a subsidiary of KW at the time, and I, I was up in the mountains around here, and oh, I blew yeah. out a coilover on in the mountains. It was sketchy as fuck. Bags, sketchy as fuck. Coils. Yeah, That's yeah. Um, popped a coil, and then I started reaching out to companies to like. You know, ask for sponsorships. KW was gonna offer me like 50% off, but I had to buy their like most expensive suspension, which was like, Ugh. I think $12,000 at the time. So Shut I was like, up. I was like, oh, so I still have to spend six grand, and so I'm like, like 22, 23 at the time. <laughs> like, I can't afford that. So I reached out to Airlift, and they're like, yeah. So I think I got an Airlift for 50% off. That's sweet. And it's been good, obviously, like, because, yeah, I mean, there's not a bunch of people that say, like, whatever, like, airlift, like, obviously can't handle on the no, track. This is a street track car, man. It's it not handles, a full track. It, like, you obviously, like, if in comparison to a nice set of coils, you think you can keep up? Oh, yeah. For sure. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, this thing punches above its weight class for sure. Awesome. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you want to mention about the build? Or kind of a little, little plug for yourself or whatever? No, I mean, yeah. So, like, the, I, I feel like uh, I reached a plateau with the car and I was happy with where it was. But now, like, the, the reinvigoration with being on the TV show, we decided that we're going to start, you know, filming. And we're going to do something similar to what you're doing yeah. uh, here. But uh, we're going to do reaction videos to people's cars. So we started a new channel called Car Talk on YouTube. And my buddy Rob and Wob, my last name, uh, we're going to be doing some reaction videos to people's cars in their car as well as there in my car. So it's going to be, uh, it's good. We're going to do some filming with your car here. Uh, we're going to do a reaction to your car versus my car. Yeah. And uh, I have a feeling I'm going to, I'm going to fall in love a little bit because this thing's slightly brutal. And I uh, think yeah, you're going to fall like, in love too. Oh yeah. I think I mean, both, that's the both thing you is... and I are going to walk away from this and be like slightly jealous. Because I mean, honestly, it, it's, the thing is, I feel like, at least for me, I was, I was like, you're chasing perfection. You want a car that's going to be comfortable. You want a car that's fast. You want a car that's aggressive. And it's hard to get, you know, the best of everything. Um, so I think my car is definitely going to be, like, a lot more tame, obviously. Maybe a little bit more comfy. Um, but you're just going to be fucking balls to the walls and gnarly. And yeah. Well, so I, your car has a lot of what I miss about driving Subaru. Because when you go this insane, it's like... You have to be mentally prepared to get behind the wheel. Like the first couple months when I got the car back, like the amount of adrenaline going through your veins, like you get out of the car and your hands are shaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now, you know, you get used to it. You get a little bit jaded. So um, you. My car's going to feel like a Prius. We'll, we'll, t we'll talk after you get out of the car because you're going to yeah. be like, 
Holy I, shit. I'm probably going to end up <laughs> buying a fully rotated kit and get a go yeah, GT35. I'm upset. I'm upset. We'll see. Well, sweet. I'm excited. Uh, if you guys want to check out his channel, make sure you do, which is Car Talk. Yeah, Car Talk on YouTube. Uh, and we're doing some behind the scenes stuff with, uh, you know, the new, the new Rob Ferretti show, Sorted. Sweet. And then uh, we're going to start launching, you know, some reaction videos, sweet. so behind the build style videos. Very sweet. And then you can also check him out on Instagram. That's going to be Stormtrooper WRX. I think that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. We're going to catch you on the next one. Peace out. That was pretty good. I think it was good. We got some good stories, some funny.